Hi beauties. All right, today, quick little chat, get ready with me, good old fashioned like Christmas aesthetic. That's what I'm going for today. I have donned my Three Chains Christmas sweater, which is my favorite. It is absolutely my favorite. And the colors are black. Obviously you've got these really metallic silver and gold, but they also have like red and green going on. So I figured this would be a good time to also test out our Hank and Henry Fuego palette that we picked up from BoxyCharm um, in the November, no, October uh, pop-up sale. I was having trouble remembering because I ordered in November two different orders and um, they still haven't shown up yet. I haven't even gotten shipping confirmation. So we're just uh, patiently waiting on those puppies. But it's got a lot of really great reds and yellow, reds and yellows, reds and greens. Uh, mainly this this green, one green, one that green right there. Um, but I figured we could make like a nice kind of like little red green look going on with that, kind of go in with the, the Christmas vibe make something happen with that or not. I don't even know. Who, kn who knows? It doesn't even feel like Christmas. That's the weird thing is like, it's this weird, this year's just weird. Like I just, everything's passing so quickly and I'm like, what is happening? Anywho, I'm also going to use uh, from our diamonds a nice advent calendar that we unboxed. I'm going to do uh, day one, which is this very nice, really red lipstick. I wanted to test that out. I wanted to do on camera because why not? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while we're sitting here. This could wind up being a mistake because it may just be too much red, but I said, you know what? It's Christmas, whatever. Let's just commit to this look. Okay, so that was rough um, because this is a matte lipstick, which I normally love, but my my lips have officially entered that dry phase of Christmas of the, the, the colder season. And um, so putting it on was like putting it on the Sahara. It did not want to work. So, um, but yeah, it's pretty color, really, really classic, like, very red shade for the holidays, which hopefully will work for what we're going with today. Now I can't talk while I put on lipstick. That's why I didn't start uh, talking about what I am going to chat about today. Surprisingly enough, you haven't guessed what today's topic is. Um, I'm gonna talk about the house different from what I've talked about with the house, um, cause we're getting close. We are, today's the fifth as we're filming this. I don't know what day it's gonna post, but we are closing the 29th, which means we're basically, tw we're 24 days out from closing and actually being able to start moving stuff in and start making that transition process. And I'm in a weird place with it. And I wanna talk about that today. Now with that being said, here's just the rundown of what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking we're gonna go in with this kind of like, I think I would call this the medium shade, not quite bright. It's kind of like a nice, it's a, it's a red, but it's not like as bright as this red down here. We're gonna do this on the eyelid. Um, I'm gonna do this kind of as a blending shade and we may need a little bit of the yellow to kind of help cool it down a little bit. We're gonna cool it down with fire colors, whatever. Then I'm gonna do a cut crease. We're gonna do the green as a glitter pigment and we're going to do this as the darkening shade. That is the plan. That is what the rundown is that we're going to, to, to try and make happen today. Hopefully it turns out looking okay. But yeah, so to the house. So we're getting close to closing. Uh, we're starting to try and figure out, you know, what we need to buy before closing. Like today, we're going with my dad to um, go look at refrigerators because there's one that's on sale and we want to get that, make sure that we have that ready to be delivered. Probably not the 29th, but maybe like the 30th if possible. And if not, like sometime right after the new year. So we have a refrigerator in the house. You know, it's just, it's weird. We're starting to think, you know, what, people are asking what do you want for the house and like mainly our, our families, our families are asking what do we want for the house? What, what do we want for Christmas? And so we're trying to figure out, you know, what we're gonna have other people um, gift us if they're willing to and what we're gonna buy ourselves. And so we're, we're kind of talking about it. And obviously we've been thinking about it nonstop all year. And as excited as I am for it, I, Nikki had this moment when we were at his house packing up his room and it was just this moment of like sadness where he's like, you know, it's never going to be the same after this. Like it's a good change, but it's just this, this very hard moment of like, you know, we have a house and there was never anything that was like very per <laughs> It's, it doesn't make sense. I'm trying to explain this where it doesn't even fully make sense to me, but there's like this sense of, in college when we were living in Wilmington and we were, even after college we graduated and we were still living on our own and, and I had no intention ever of moving back in with my parents because I didn't want to have to do that. I wanted to be on my own and I didn't want to make them have to worry about me or anything like that. And so there was this sense of like, I'm never going to move back in. But then when it happened, it was a really good thing and it was a really nice thing. And, and it's, there was always this sense of that we were in an apartment. We weren't, own, we didn't own anything. 
it wasn't ours. It was just where we were living. And, and even though we were living on our own and, and, you know, taking care of ourselves and everything, it was still this sense of like, there wasn't a permanence to it. And we always had rooms back at our parents' house with all of our furniture from our childhood and stuff. And, and now we're both taking our furniture. And so we won't have those rooms anymore. I mean, they're, our, they'll be in our house. And so there's almost a sense of like, we're taking the nest that we had with our parents, both of our houses and they're gonna be now in our house and we're not really gonna have a place that we can come back to, even though we do. Like both of our parents have made it, our families make it very clear that like we always have places with them. They never don't want us. And that's a nice thing to have because, and I feel very fortunate to have that because I know there are some people out there who don't have that. And so, but there's this sense of like as excited as we both are, as, as ready as we are to have our own space and be able to get in the house and start decorating and start living our lives and doing all this stuff. It's, there's this sense of sadness. And I know Nikki really, he felt it at his house. And I think he felt it at his house because he's, honestly sacrificed a lot this year by moving in with my family and he's gotten to spend time with me and and you know he made that choice so we could be together during covid and when we weren't really you know traveling and going and seeing other people and doing all this stuff so he lost this last little bit of time with his family and and it's just weird it's like this sense of sadness when it should be happy and we're happy but it's also like a there's almost like a mourning to it like a i feel like you know my, maybe it's just my childhood is gone or it's, I don't know, you're officially an adult. I don't know what it is that I'm feeling, but it's just, it's weird. It's a very weird feeling. It's like um, it, a simultaneous, it's, I feel equally stressed and excited and sad all in one. And it's, how do you even, I don't even know how to explain it to somebody who isn't in my mind right now and, and trying to, to verbalize it. I probably am just rambling at this point. Nikki's probably like, God, editing this is gonna be a nightmare. It's what I've been dealing with the past few days, like coming home from work this morning, I um, just had this moment of like getting choked up because I was like, you know, it's only gonna be two more weeks of me driving three, well, three more weeks, three more weeks of me driving this way home. And then suddenly I'm gonna be going in a totally different direction. And and even though we're close, like our, our house is not far away from either one of our parents' houses, but it's still, it's not next door. It's not even, I mean, it's gonna be a 30 minute drive to, to be at either one of our family's houses. And, and there's this sense of like, especially with the way this year is gone, obviously we're not going to be seeing them a ton. We're still, we know, you know, COVID is still very much in full swing. And so we're not going to be putting them in danger by, you know, seeing them constantly. And, and it's the same thing we did with Nikki's family. We've made a conscious choice to not go over. We go in over and see them very strategically. And we, because the last thing we want to do is make them sick. So it's just, it, it's weird. Okay, off camera, I went ahead and did this eye and then I did my under eye. I just mixed, mixed uh, Diabolito and Inferno. Inferno is the dark shade that I'm gonna use. It's the darkening one. Um, I do want to on camera show you guys, I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow to kind of blend out a little bit of the red. Cause there's like, you know, well, there's gold. There's gold is kind of yellowish, whatever. Uh, this is the lightest shade I have in the palette. So that's why that, that's what, that was how that decision was made. I, I hope I'm, it makes sense. Like what I'm saying. I hope you guys aren't like, oh, this, she's crazy. Cause it's not that I'm not excited. It's not that I'm not ready. I mean, I've been we've been thinking about this nonstop all year. So of course we're excited. And, and Nikki's, you know, said, you know, it's, it's, it is exciting. It's sad, but it is exciting because it's us starting our lives together. And it really is. That's it. It very much feels like, you know, finally we have something that is ours. Um, it's not an apartment where, you know, if we can do whatever we want. If we want to hang pictures on every wall, we can put nails on the wall. If we want to paint the walls, we can do that. If we want to change structural things within the house, we can do that. And that is an exciting thing. There's a lot of autonomy with that. And there's also a lot of pressure. So we, of course we feel the stress of it too. Um, but it's just like this, it, it's like certain things, like one of the things Nick he mentioned was that just, you know, he, the first time he ever watched John Wick, he had just walked downstairs when he was living with his family to, to get a drink. And, and this was, you know, when he was on break from college, so this wasn't even like recently, but he, you know, walked downstairs and his dad had just basically started it. And he kind of started watching it and was like, whoa, what is this? This seems cool. And he, his dad was like, oh, it's John Wick. Do you want me to start it over? And so they sat and watched it together, even though it was something that was unplanned. And there's a lot of moments I have like that with my mom too, where I'll just come downstairs and we'll start talking about, you know, Ipsy, or we'll talk about, you know, some whatever's going on in the world. And we'll just sit and have like an hour or two hour long conversation that we weren't planning on doing. We didn't schedule it. It just happened because that's what happens when you live with people. And 
And now that it, there's a sadness to it, like it's that's going away and, and it, it won't be gone, but it just won't be the same ever. And so I think there's just like a, I know Nikki's feeling it too. I'm definitely feeling it and it's, it's weird. Like I get emotional even just talking about it or thinking about it. Cause it's like, there's almost part of me that goes like, ah, oh, I want it so bad and I want it to happen. But I feel like there's, you know, the whole year I was like, I want this to happen. I can't believe we have to wait until the 29th to get in the house. And we were hoping to be in November. And you know, now that you get closer to it, you go, what an, a blessing it was to have a little bit of extra time to be in this like, kind of safety cocoon. So I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional, but it's just, it's one of those things where you just, it's just like, there's such a conflict of emotions. I think, you know, if we had moved from the apartment or if we moved from an apartment or if we had been living on our own and we're moving into a house from somewhere we were renting, it would have been a totally different feeling. It would have been nothing but like, oh my God, thank God we're in our own place finally. We can do what we want. Like we're out of the, the, the apartment finally, but that's not what happened. And, and because that's not what happened, there's actually, you know, there was just less pressure. We, we didn't have a, an expiration date on our lease or anything like that. So it gave us a lot more freedom with being able to, you know, be flexible when they were saying, hey, it's gonna get pushed back. It's gonna get pushed back or this isn't gonna work out or, you know, it's, you're not gonna be in until the end of the year. Because of that, you know, because we were living with our families, there wasn't the same amount of like, you know, t ticking time going on, but be <laughs> but because of that, it also makes it so much harder to to actually make the the physical move. And that's the thing my dad keeps saying too. He's like, well, the nice thing is because you, you aren't paying rent anywhere, you, you don't have like a, like I said, an expiration date on like when you need to be out basically. He was like, if it takes you a month to move, if it takes you two weeks to move, if it takes you two months to move, there's no, you know, you can leave things at your place. You can come back and pick stuff up as necessary. Like, you know, we're not even running a U-Haul probably until like two weeks after we move into the house or get access to the house as ours. I just feel like we need to get the little stuff out of the way for, there's so much stuff in so many different locations. We need to get like as much of the little stuff that we can move without a big truck out of the way. So that way when we're like going around with the U-Haul, like, to, cause we have to go to my house, to Nikki's house, to storage. We have to go all these different places to pick up stuff with the U-Haul. And so I'm like, you know, we just need to get whatever we can out first. So I don't know, it's just a lot. It sounds, I'm sure I sound crazy and I don't mean it to be like ungrateful cause I'm not ungrateful. I'm very thankful that we've been able to make this happen. This is, you know, something that I'm serious when I say, when we moved back from Wilmington, I said, I'm not renting again. I'm not gonna waste my money renting. I, I my parents are being very, good about this. I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to save money. It's going to be very strategic and we're going to be able to buy a house. And, and it, everything worked out very serendipitously for us to be able to get the house, especially with how crazy 2020 has been. Cause Nikki really got his new job and COVID happened like two weeks later. So we were very fortunate because if he hadn't had that job, he would have been working still as a server and we would not, there, we, there would have been no way we would have qualified for a mortgage. He would have been unemployed. He would have been probably trying to figure out where he can go work in the middle of a global pandemic. So it really, he we ha, we got very fortunate. And, and I do feel like it's one of those things where you look at all the signs and you're like, this was what was meant to happen, but it's still this like, even all this excitement and, and as thankful as I am for everything that has worked out well, there is just this like looming sadness and it's it's a very conflicting emotion and and I it's been nice to know that I'm not the only one feeling it and it's also made me feel really sad because I feel like there's part of me that feels like I kind of took away some of Nikki's time with his family because he decided to move in so we wouldn't be separated during COVID and and you know I know and that's you know that's part of it I know we are you know it, whatever you want to say as stupid as and cheesy as it's going to sound but we are each other's future and so there was like a you know, he made that sacrifice without even thinking twice about it because that was, you know, no, no, nobody thought it was gonna be a year that we were gonna be, you know, isolating and doing all this. We were thinking it was gonna be a month or two months maybe, but like, you know, here we are still heading into 2021 and it's still gonna be just as serious. So I don't know, it's just, I really feel, I'm trying so hard to express like the emotions that I'm feeling and I feel like I just keep getting like more and more confusing about it, so. Um, but it is, it's, it's, it's just a, it's exciting and it's sad and it's a lot of things all at one. And so I'm, I'm just like have these waves of emotions where I'm like, oh, I'm so excited about it. And then I have like another wave where I'm like, I want to sit down and cry. And I'm like, why do I feel like this was something that we've been waiting for the entire year? And it's, I think it's just because I'm not good with change at all, like any sort of change. And, and honestly, like I, I come back to us moving out of Wilmington. It was a horrible circumstance. We were literally 
that, you know, our, our apartment was deemed unlivable. We didn't lose any of our things. We were able to go get them, but it was deemed unlivable because of a hurricane. And so, you know, it's, it's a very traumatic and, and jarring experience to be like, oh my God, every, you know, everything we knew is gonna be uprooted and, and turned upside down. But it was the best thing for us because I am so, uncomfortable with change that even though now being in in charlotte and knowing that that was like not the right place for us at all and and, and literally immediately we both were so much happier because we were you know near our families and we had a support system and we just didn't have that there i would have never left because i just don't like to make the decision to move or to change to i just am so bad at change so, so for me to have made this decision to to change so dramatically it, i'm i'm 27 years old 26 and a half whatever but I'm, I'm it's time like it's not like i'm like oh i'm too young to be moving out in my own house like no that's not it at all it's damn it's time everybody agrees it's time but it's just the it's just the process of like changing that I'm afraid of. So that's where I am emotionally and mentally right now. Okay, so I finished up everything. I like it. I think it's a pretty Christmassy look. The palette's gorgeous. This is the second Hank and Henry one I've tested. I bought two from that pop-up sale and the, the, the pigments in it just blend so well together. The colors are just so much for such bright palettes because the other one was a very pastel palette for such bright and like powerful palettes. I feel like they just do such a good job of, of really making it very almost foolproof, I think, because some palettes, even if they're a good formula, I still struggle to blend out and everything. And I just, both palettes, I think, just did a, an excellent job of really mixing well together. And I think that speaks highly of the brand. Um, I know in the boxy pop-up that I did last month, I've got at least one more Hank and Henry palette coming and a bunch of other, like a Zoe, couple of Zoeva palettes. And I think I got like a Violet Voss or two palette. I don't know. There's a lot coming. I don't know what the deal with that is. I know that they emailed us and said it's gonna be delayed but now we're looking at, it's been a month since I ordered the first one. So I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, thanks for listening to me talk about the house. Uh, I know I keep bringing it up. This is this was less about the house though, and more of just how I'm feeling about the process of it, which is why I wanted to share that. Um, one thing that Nikki did mention off camera that I, I it did kind of like really resonate with me because I don't think about it this way, but he was like, it, what you said about, you know, this is our, our future it is very powerful because you know you're you're 26 he's 20 he said you i i me i am 26 he's 25 and when we met when we started dating i was 18 and he was 16 and almost 17 he turned like 17 a month after we started dating so so we were children i mean we really were kids and and now we're making these huge adult decisions together and and you know within a year we should have a house and be married. And so that's that's a really, it's an exciting time and it's also just a very scary time. And I think there's just a lot of like, we know things are gonna change and everything is gonna change and it's gonna be good, but it's just that process of like ripping the bandaid off and like making the decisions that make your life different. It's, it's a little bit scary, so yeah. That's what I'm feeling right now. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It helps us out a ton. If you like us, subscribe. We would love for you to be part of the Dark Angel family. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my holiday look. Hopefully we'll get some more out there. I've got like four more Christmas sweaters that I could do something with, so yeah. Other than that, I hope you guys are all safe and healthy. You have a wonderful day and you stay girly with a dark twist.